Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tesla.com and here at the CES 2016 Drone Rodeo, I'm here with Christoph, who is one of the co-founders of Nixie. And Nixie is an interesting quadcopter because it's something it flies autonomously and it's also a wearable. How are you doing, Christoph? Good, how are you? Doing all right. Now we've heard a lot about Nixie in the past year. You guys got a lot of attention, won the, uh, the Intel Edison Challenge. Um, and with a quadcopter that takes pictures of you without you having to do anything, basically. Uh, how did this idea come about? It was literally that um, one and a half years ago, my daughter took her first steps, and it was this moment where it was this would have been great if you would have captured, if you would have been able to capture this. And then you think about what what's missing in current camera technology in order to capture moments like this. And and so we took it from first principle and thought about a, a camera to capture a moment like this needs to be super accessible. So that's why we made our camera wearable. Then. It needs to give you the perspective of the scene, so not just what you're looking at, but of you and, and um, what you want to take a picture of. And that's why we made it flyable. And then also, you want to be in the moment, you want to keep doing what you were doing, and that's why we made it fully autonomous. So there's no need to control the thing while it's out there in the air. And no need to have like a garish selfie stick or something. You see so many photos of people holding a stick out, you don't need to hold any stick out because the quadcopter is already out there capturing the moment. Now, the I interesting heard, thing there is really it changes the way of the quality of the picture you can capture because with a stick, you're always busy holding the stick and doing these things. Here, you're free to keep doing what you were doing and that's a totally different kind of picture we want to give to you. Now, the design you and your team ended up with is a wearable, something you put on your wrist. But I heard that one of your earlier designs, one of your prototypes, and you guys prototype a lot, <laughs> was something, a pair of glasses actually. And why did you, how did you come up with that idea? Literally, you take it from the first principles. You want it to be fast accessible, you want it to be flyable, and autonomous. And this you can also realize with a, very, uh, with a flying pair of glasses. So you so. actually had a prototype <laughs> where you put rotors on the corners of the glasses, exactly. threw it out, took a picture, and it came back? That was wow. actually the very first prototype. And I then, built the day after having the idea. <laughs> <laughs> but, and creating these prototypes really quickly, quickly iterating, is something you guys are very proud of. Um, and you guys have shown a lot of prototypes already. This is obviously a 3D printed prototype. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us about some of the mechanical design and how you approach, because it's not just a rigid structure. This is malleable. There's a function functionality to the 3D printed aspect of it. How does it actually work and fit onto your Oh hand? yeah, so this is really still a prototype, so I'm happy to share how the mechanism works, because for production we need to build it differently. But for the prototype, we solve this bistable mechanisms of the band going around, or being stable in this position by actually having a fishing line inside here and having a rubber band that can either hold it in the closed position or in the open position. Tension wire. Yes. Ah, brilliant. So it makes it effectively like one of those slap on wrist sticks that you had back in high Pretty school. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. It's very much the same principle. And then is this basically uh, one 3D printed piece for each of the, uh, each of the arms or the chassis? Yeah, you see here, um, every piece that moves with respect to each other is a separate piece. Okay. And a fishing line inside here makes a living hinge. Ah, um, but yeah, it's a couple of pieces, easy to print. And then electronics. Miniaturization obviously allows this to happen. Uh, the speed controllers, the processor, um, and the rotors being lightweight, uh, including the battery, uh, that all keeps this really small and compact. Now, it's not just a quad copy because it's autonomous. You throw it out, it turns around, aims back at you, mm -hmm. takes a picture, and then comes back. What are the mechanical challenges, the engineering challenges, to get that to work properly? Yes, so to get this autonomy to work, it's not enough just to think about a normal toy quadcopter with a small microcontroller. No, much more computational power needed is needed here. And so what helps here is cell phone technology has advanced uh, the miniaturization of powerful processors so much that we can bootstrap now on this technology and, and we can leverage this to make this happen. We get very good cameras, very lightweight and small, and we get very powerful processors, very lightweight, very small, with reasonable power consumption. And so you can pack all this in a form factor like this. You're asking the quadcopter not only to function properly and end up back in your hand, but also to be a good photographer, because you mm -hmm. want to be able to keep the image it takes. Now, there are so many variables that the quadcopter doesn't know. So what does it know when you release it? Does it know, mm -hmm. for example, its elevation, its angle, its, the, how strong you're throwing it? What are those variables that it's taking into account? Mm -hmm. So 
it needs to know where you are, right? Because this is what the picture should, should center around. And so when you throw it and it measures um, accelerations and rotations, it entirely understands from which point it came from. And so it assumes that's also the point you are at. And that's a good assumption. And so it turns its camera towards this point, takes a picture and returns to this point. Do you have to throw it in a certain way so it knows the beginning orientation? It is quite resilient to how you throw it. Um, at some point it might get confused, but it always knows it. <laughs> and then also importantly, is it coming back to that spot? So mm -hmm. it picks it because it knows its rotation, it knows the acceleration, it knows if it gets the picture right, it'll know that that's where it should be flying its horn, and it just comes back toward you and you grab it out of the sky. And that's why we like to call it a boomerang, because it is a intelligent realization of, of uh, electronic realization of a, of a boomerang. Now, uh, in terms of the optics, uh, you know, the, the, you can't have the camera, it needs to autofocus. You need to put basically a smartphone camera um, on there. Is that basically what you're using? A, a yes, we definitely camera? bootstrap on this. Uh, major technology advance um, to miniaturize cameras, which was done in the mobile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then turning this into a production unit, you guys have some seed funding now, you guys are still making prototypes. This is not what the final version is going to be. It's not going to be a 3D printed part. Uh, what's the next steps? What, is, what does it take to get this into a final product in the consumer's hands? Mm -hmm. So we are proud of the idea. We are proud of the concept. Uh, people seem to love it. So we feel strong that uh, we really want to make this um, product happen. And, and now our challenge is, uh, what we're working on is, is to really grow a team that can take this idea now through production and make it a product for everyone. What are the big challenges? Is it in the software side? Is it in the manufacturing side? Uh, what are the things that you need to get right to get this real? I would say each of these individuals is a huge challenge. Get the software right, get the manufacturing right, get the mechanics right. But the major challenge is tying all this together because we have we are facing challenges in each individual part of those. Because we are advancing technology in, in, in each of these sectors, our software, the way the navigation works, goes beyond what's done today. Then the, the form factor miniaturization goes beyond what's done today. So we're facing many challenges in many different aspects and, and, and bringing this together to, uh, to build one um, product in the end that satisfies the consumer, that, that's a great challenge. And, that's the fundamentals fun. are in place though, you imagine the final mm -hmm. Nixie will look something like this? Or do you think the form factor itself could change? That's an interesting question because uh, we talked about the flying pair of glasses, right? Yeah. And for us it's so important just to deliver this, this experience to the customer. How the product actually looks like, uh, how exactly it looks like, is, is not so important to us. So we are still iterating and uh, stay tuned with what we come up with. It's very exciting, and of course we can't end without asking if we can get a demo. Can we see the Nixie working? I think we should give it a try. Let's give it a try. <laughs> okay. Takes a picture and comes right back. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It was fun. Thank you.